I want to show you how to optimize a portfolio using actual stock data. Now there are several videos that that do this and each one seems to incorporate some nice little tricks for the calculation and um, I'm going to try and incorporate the best of all of those into this to try and make it as easy as possible. So the first thing I did was I grabbed some stock price data for Amazon, Google, and Tesla from Yahoo Finance. And after downloading that, and I have five years of monthly data, I calculated the returns for each um, period. And you can do that by taking the current period, dividing it by the previous period, and subtracting one, and then copying the formula down. And I did that for Amazon, Google, and Tesla. Now, you're going to need to reference these some of these columns again. So rather than having to reference them over and over and over again, uh, what you can do is you can name them. So you can highlight, for example, all of Amazon's return data, and you can give it a name. And you see, I've already done that. I called it AMZN. And I've also done that for Google as well as Tesla. And actually, you know what? I'm going to do this for um, all three stocks as well. Because I'm going to need this, and this will save me some time. So let me just call this uh, um, Amazon, Google, Tesla. So I'll call it AGT. All right. So I'm going to reference these by doing this. So I need the expected returns. So how am I going to do that? Well, there are ways to do that, but I'm just going to use the historical average. So I'm going to use the average function in Excel, and I'm going to type in AMZN, and you see that it highlights that. So I don't have to go back there and um, re-highlight all those cells. The same with um, averaging Google's returns to get their expected return, as well as Tesla. So what do I have here? Average. And again, now I have the average re expected returns. Or So um, in order to do this, this variance-covariance analysis, or this um, portfolio variance, I'm going to need the variance-covariance matrix for Amazon and Google. So the one thing I can do is I could calculate the variance for each individual stock and then calculate the covariance between each pair of stocks. And if you've seen a variance covariance matrix along the diagonal, you happen to have the variances and then along the off diagonal, you have the you know, covariances between each pair. And you can do that separately if this is what you want to do by using, for example, the VAR function for variance. And there's VAR.P, which is for the population variance, and VAR.S, which is for the sample variance. Technically, we ought to use the sample variance because this is a sample. But it's not going to make a lot of difference. The difference is whether you divide by N or N minus 1 in the case of a sample. And because there are you know, 60 observations, whether you divide by 60 or 59 isn't going to make a lot of difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, a nice analysis the tool that Excel has built in in the data analysis pack. Now, if you don't happen to see this when you click on the data, data tab, you can simply go and install it by hitting File, Options, Add-ins, and down here it says Excel Add-ins, click Go, and just make sure the analysis tool pack is clicked on and we're also going to use the solver um, add-in as well so make sure that's clicked on as well and click OK and you see these two are here so if I click data analysis and I click covariance I've actually highlighted those already because I was doing this so here um, I'm going to find the variance covariance for this and I want to make sure I put it in the correct output range and I'd like to put it in I believe L16 and 
enter and I'm gonna say OK so here I have this information here and I'm actually going to type in above this let me just type in the names uh, Google and Tesla and I'm actually going to make these the weights these are gonna be the weights the percentages in the portfolio and I'm just gonna make up some numbers I'm gonna say 25 percent 25 percent and 50 percent and this is going to be equal to what's here okay so that's the weight in Amazon 25 percent and this is going to be the weight of Google and this is going to be equal to the weight of Tesla now when we optimize the portfolio it's going to adjust these weights to get the optimal um, portfolio now when you do a variance covariance matrix like I said along the diagonal you happen to have the variances in fact what Excel does in this um, function is it calculates the population variance again probably should be using sample variance but it's not going to make that much difference what we have to do is fill in these other off diagonal items so remember that right here is the is the covariance between Amazon and Google so it's going to be exactly the same as the covariance between Google and Amazon and so we can just type in equals and just copy this right here and for this one here we have well let's see for right here this is Google and Tesla so that should go right here so let's say equals and then right here is going to be Tesla with Amazon so I'm just gonna fill in the table here alright so now we have our variance covariance matrix filled in now one video I watched actually uh, several of them use matrix algebra which you can do in Excel but which most of us are not all that familiar with now there's another way to actually do this and the way to do this is to calculate the contribution to the variance of each security so what Amazon contributes to the total variance what Google does and what Tesla does and how does that work if you're familiar with portfolio variance for example in the two stock case it's the variance of the first stock times the or let me say it this way it's the weight in the first stock squared times the variance of the first stock plus the weight in the second stock squared times the variance of the second stock times two times the covariance between the first stock and the second stock so what's the contribution of the first stock it's its variance plus the covariance what's the contribution of the second stock it's the second stocks variance and the um, covariance between the two stocks so the contribution that Amazon makes to the total uh, the total variance of the portfolio would be Amazon's variance squared right or actually Amazon's weight squared times its variance plus the relationship between the covariance between Amazon and Google and Amazon and Tesla with the weights um, appropriately done so how can you do that so here's how you can figure this out take this and we're gonna say we're gonna take the weight in Amazon and we're going to multiply it by and we're gonna use something called some product and the some product will for example I'm gonna put in these weights and I'm going to put in the variance and covariances here and what's going to do it's going to take this and multiply it by this and then add it to this multiplied by this and then add it to this multiplied by this so let me do this is the first array 
and then the second array is this one. Oh, and back here, I want to make sure that I lock the the weights in, so I'm going to put a dollar sign in. I forgot to do it before. You could hit the F4 key and it would lock the weights. And I'm going to close up the parentheses. So 0.1237% is Amazon's contribution. So think about what it did. It took the weight times this weight, so that's the weight squared times the variance of Amazon. Then it took the weight um, of Amazon times the weight of Google times the covariance between the two. And then it added the weight of um, Amazon times the weight of Tesla times the covariance between the two. And we can copy this formula across and what we get is the different contributions that they make towards the portfolio variance. And if we sum those up, that's going to be equal to portfolio variance. All right, let's see what else we can do here. Now, when we do this calculation, we're going to need uh, we're going to need some constraints. And one constraint we're going to have is that the sum of the weights, which is these, right here adds up to what happened there? Ah, it should be really a hundred percent. Let me see, did I equals let me try that again. Did I happen to get oh, I may have gone down. Uh, I believe I went down one um, row and got these numbers in here. So it's 100%. You add those up, 25, 25, 50. What's the expected return of the portfolio? Well, we can simply use the weights, again, the sum product. So this, the weight in Amazon times Amazon's expected return plus the weight in Google times Google's expected return times the weight in Tesla times Tesla's expected return. So we can use that sum product function again. we're going to say this times this. All right, so the, the uh, portfolio expected return is 4.8058%. And then we said the variance is going to be equal to this summed up. And so the standard deviation is the square root of that. So this is going to be equal to sum the, the contributions of each one of those securities to the um, total variance. And we're going to take the square root of it by raising it to the 0.5 power. So there's the standard deviation for the portfolio. And now what we want to do to optimize this is to optimize the Sharpe ratio. And the Sharpe ratio is equal to the expected return of the portfolio, which is here, minus the risk-free rate, divided by the standard deviation. And so we have 0.420471. Now, we don't know if that's the, this is the best ratio. What we want to do is optimize this. And this is where the solver function comes in. Solver lets us maximize or minimize a function by changing certain variables subject to some constraints if we happen to have those. So this is what we want to maximize, so that's good. We want to change the following variables, which would be these weights. I'm going to enter. And we want to make sure that, that um, this here, this sum of these weights 
is going to add up to 100%. And here I have checked the block, make unconstrained variables non-negative. So I don't want these to be negative. That would mean we're engaging in short selling. And I'm going to hit solve and it should change these proportions, these weights, that will optimize this portfolio. So let me hit solve. So yes, I want to keep that. And so the proportions we should have in this portfolio are 30% in Amazon, 51% in Google, and 19% in Tesla. So that gives us the optimal portfolio or the steepest sharp ratio. So I hope that was helpful. Okay, I tried to incorporate a couple little tricks like using the variance covariance function so that you don't have to do each one separately. Also in terms of naming um, some of these return columns. And um, hopefully this is a little simpler than actually using matrix algebra to do it. But it's also much easier than doing it based on the standard formula. The standard formula being the, uh, you know, would have been Amazon, uh, the weight in Amazon squared times the variance of Amazon plus the weight in Google squared times Google's variance plus the um, weight in Tesla times Tesla's variance plus two times um, the weight in Amazon times the weight in Google times the covariance between Amazon and Google, et cetera, et cetera. Now, in this case, because you have three securities, you're going to have um, three different covariance terms, right? Between Amazon and Google, between Amazon and Tesla, and between Google and Tesla. But if you have, you know, a lot of securities in here, you know, let's say even five, you're going to have 10 different covariance terms. The, the, the um, formula for that is N times the um, sum of n minus 1 divided by 2. So that would be 5 times 4 divided by 2. You'd have 10 covariance terms, even if you only had 5 stocks in your portfolio. That makes for a very long um, calculation, okay? A very long equation. You know, a little bit easier to do it this way, I think, and we've avoided using matrix algebra.